Guys, uh, this is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. Uh, and this short video, okay, uh, which is dealing with, I suppose, it's another video in our series of videos uh, using the Excel Data and Analysis Tool Pack, uh, is going to concentrate on how to generate a collection of descriptive statistics okay, uh, associated with a number of variables. Okay? Well, actually, I suppose in this particular instance here, I've actually got a single variable, okay? Uh, well, I've got two variables. I have an independent variable and I have a dependent variable, okay? Uh, the independent variable, which is the type of drink, has three categories, a uh, Diet Coke, regular Coke, and Red Bull. And the dependent variables, which is which is these numbers here, okay, uh, represents the amount of time that it took for a participant uh, to run 400 meters. Now, this is fictitious data here, yeah, okay? But basically what I'm trying to figure out is... Uh, Actually, this is this was used in a, use a, it will be used in a later analysis, which is dealing with an ANOVA. Okay, uh, but at some stage we're trying to figure out whether drinking Diet Coke, regular Coke, or Red Bull before a race actually influences your performance. Yeah, how long it's actually taking you to run the race. But for this video, all I'd like to do is I'd like to generate a collection of descriptive statistics that define distributions associated with each level. Okay, of measurement on this particular independent variable, which is the type of drink. Okay. And we're going to use the Excel data analysis tool pack to accomplish that. So like in all the previous videos uh, that have dealt with the data analysis tool pack, it can be found on the data ribbon. So here's my data ribbon. Uh, it's over here. It's, it's, well, it's on my ribbon on the right-hand side. Okay? It's called data analysis. So I'm going to click on data analysis. We get a pop-up window. Okay? Actually, typically the pop-up window is by default is is set at a novel sing a novel single factor. Okay, but what we'll do is we'll just scroll down this particular list of of I suppose uh, procedures that we can perform using the data analysis tool pack, and we'll just find descriptive statistics, which is which is here. So I'm just choosing descriptive statistics, and then I'm going to hit OK. So once we have that, we get another pop-up window where we have to define the range of values, where the data is, resides within the Excel uh, spreadsheet, and what we're looking for in relation to outputs. Okay, So the input range, and actually I'm going to click on this, this symbol here which says labels in the first row, Okay, and the input range I'm going to specify to be Diet Coke, right across here to Red Bull, right down to the corner here. Okay, So my input range is from cell D4, down to cell F28. Okay, uh, the data is grouped by columns. Okay, which means that uh, each column is going to be is going to be, I suppose, each column is going to be considered to be a separate variable, albeit it's a different level of measurement associated with the drink variable within within uh, the Excel data analysis tool pack. With will the analysis will be done based off the data within each column and each column separate to each other column. Okay. I need to specify my output range. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to specify the output range to be somewhere in this particular data set. Let me just actually say here. Okay. Uh, and also I need to specify what I'd like output. Uh, what I want is summary descriptive statistics. Summary, summary statistics. I could also ask for confidence levels for the means. Okay. In which case I specify the size of the confidence interval. But we won't do that in this case. All we're looking for is summary statistics. Okay. So, oh, whoops, what happened there? Okay, my, I've lost my input range. So let me actually re-specify my input range. It's from Diet Coke here all the way down to the 67 down here in the right-hand corner. Okay, and uh, let me specify my output range to be somewhere in this data, sh data sheet, let's say here. Okay, and I want summary statistics. And that's all we're looking for in this particular case. As I said, we could look for confidence intervals and specific confidence intervals of specific sizes. By default, if you select confidence intervals, it gives you a confidence interval, a 95% confidence interval for the mean. But we could ask for some other, I suppose, uh, width of interval, yeah, depending on what, what particular type of accuracy we're looking for. Okay. Uh, but we're not looking for confidence intervals. So that's it done. Let's hit OK. We hit OK, and here's all of our output. Okay. Now there is some duplication in this particular in this particular uh, in this particular table. So what I'm going to do is I'm just actually going to get rid of these particular headers here. Okay. I'm just going to say delete them. Delete. Shift cells to the left. I'm going to delete these particular these particular labels here. Shift cells to the left. Delete them. Okay. Shift cells to the left. And actually, this first column represents the Diet Coke values, so let me just put that label in there, 
Let me now get rid of that. The other column, which we didn't move, represents regular Coke, and the final column represents our Red Bull. Okay, so let's take that and let's put them in here. Okay, but basically what we have now is we have a nicely formatted table. Okay, uh, which represents our descriptive statistics. Maybe I'll get rid of the first row as well because it's blank there. So delete, shift cells up, and now we have all our descriptive statistics. Now, actually, what we can actually see really clearly from these descriptives, okay, is that the average of each one of our samples, okay, the average, I suppose, time it takes to run 400 meters for people that drank Diet Coke was 51 seconds. The average for regular Coke drinkers was 54 seconds, and the average for Red Bull drinkers was 66 seconds, or approximately 67 seconds. Don't forget the mean is the center of our distribution. And we can actually see all their associated standard deviations in relation to Diet Coke, the associated standard deviations around 5. Similarly in relation to regular Coke, and it's a bit, little, bit, little bit lower in relation to Red Bull. Okay? We have all the median values, 52, 54, 67, the modal values, 49, 54, and 66. Don't forget the relationship between the mode, the median, and the mean will tell us whether the distribution is positively or negatively skewed or whether it's symmetrical when we look at it from a numerical perspective. But we also have the skewness statistic listed here, okay, which is minus 0.28 or minus 0.29 approximately for Diet Coke, which is very, very small negative skew. It's 0 0.02, which sort of indicates that there's no skew for regular Coke, and it's minus 0 0.1 for Red Bull, which is very, very small amount of negative skewness. Actually, to be honest with you, these distributions are all normal, yeah, based off these. Well, they're all symmetrical based off these particular statistics here. Okay? We would really want to be a significant distance away from zero yeah, for, for there to be actual skewness. And then we have all the kurtosis values as well listed across, listed, listed across here. That's how peaked relative to a normal distribution that this, these particular distributions are. Uh, we have the minimum values uh, on each variable. In other words, the minimum time sp took taken to run 400 meters when the people drank Diet Coke was 41 seconds, whereas the minimum amount of time taken to run 400 meters for those people that drank Red Bull was 59 seconds. Okay, so you can see all the statistics are provided here. Uh, so that's actually how easy it is, or how straightforward it is to generate a set of descriptive statistics for a number of variables. Okay, well in this case, let's keep in mind we've got one independent variable, and each one of these columns represents a level of measurement associated with our independent variable. Okay guys, once again this was Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland and I hope this video uh, on how to generate descriptive statistics using the Excel Data Analysis Tool Pack was in some way uh, intuitive and helpful. Once again, thanks for your time.